What exactly um, uh, is, can you explain the documentary to me? Yeah, the documentary I've been uh, going around, I started working on this in school and I just graduated. Right. So I'm keeping it going. It's basically uh, finding out uh, different people's stories on YouTube. And then um, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to um, turn off my camera and then kind of <laughs> and then record the screen. So it'd be like okay. a full screen um, recording of a screen capture. What's up, dude? <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Good. Are you are you wearing pants during this interview? No. Neither are we. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. If we stand up, everybody gets a, a weenie show. So. <laughs> no pants needed for these interviews. Does, does it matter how I respond? I mean, I don't know how your documentary is. I mean, I was going to just be me, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Go. All right, I'll set this up and we'll roll. The average view count for a video on YouTube is like 300. You know, yes, there are a lot of videos who have gotten a massive amount of views, but there are millions of videos that have 17 views because it's the 17 people that were at that party that watched the video and that's it. Nobody else watches it. So after a little while, two things. If you get a video that gets a certain view count, YouTube may contact you and say, would you like to apply for our partnership program? Or you can apply for their partnership program at the onset of, of doing some videos. And if you get accepted into the partnership program. You can make uh, Google AdSense revenue, which is what every YouTube partner gets. They get a small share of um, advertising money associated with their video. So when you go to a video and that horrible little annoying thing that pops up at the bottom of the video, the ad, if people click on that ad, then you get a, a percentage of of whatever YouTube gets for having that ad there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very small percentage, um, but when you're talking about a small percentage of a million views, that is actually a lot of money. And they wanna take like 30%, 20%, whatever from your earnings, and they will help you, you know, get collaborations with another YouTubers, make t-shirts for you, fly you out on their payments and stuff. On some sites too, if people buy something, then you get more AdSense, I'm not sure exactly how that works I just know that you know it's you get a check every month <laughs> the revenue that is generated from those ad sales are usually based upon a CPM which is a cost per thousand so if you do a video let's say you get a hundred thousand views you have a hundred CPM units let's say your CPM at the time is you know you're just getting started which is a lower maybe it's a five dollar CPM so then you have five hundred dollars that you would get for generating those views you get a percentage of that YouTube gets a percentage of that and you should give you getting at least three dollars a thousand views so that means you know if you upload and however many views your videos get in a month then they'll cut you a paycheck and have it sent to your bank um, for those for those views that percentage itself I think changes over time depending upon the number of views and number of subscribers that you get and kind of those things you know it's kind of like it's kind of like TV shows on cable and or networks. The more popular the TV show, the more leverage they have when it comes to negotiation. Um, so it works out, you know, to like six figures for a year for like the top half percent of, of, of creators. That's why they're really weary about, you know, copyright videos. They're really weird about that. Anything that you have music on that doesn't belong to you because essentially you are making money off of it. They don't want somebody else to make money off of their work. On the staff again, huh, Chad? Clint, we meet again at last. The circle is complete. You don't get along with your employees too well, do you? No. Maybe you should try being less of a butthole. We're making videos for quite a while, and we thought, well, this will be like a, you know, more of a big budget than we're used to, but let's go for it. So we bought the costume online. Um, it was pretty expensive for, for our budget at the time, which was, you know, nothing, obviously. It was like $600. And uh, there was a, a local grocery store. We knew that they would probably be open to letting us shoot there. We arranged it so that we could go in at night after they were closed. And, um, and we shot the first episode of Chad Vader. Ooh, 
right clicker. I'm an iBook flipper. Macs and PCs, no fight gets bigger. Surf Safari or browsing IE. Better know what you rap a Mac or PC. It just started as a song that we wrote. Um, and and then, you know, I think he found out about YouTube and put it up there. And we said, well, we need to come up with a name for, for a channel for YouTube for how this works. And so we went through a long list of internal nonsense words like Palace Nights. And uh, that was that definitely won out. And uh, yeah, that's been our, our, our viral identity since. I began working as a professional speaker back in 2000 when I finished graduate school. And when I first started speaking, I got a great piece of advice from a friend of mine that said, I need to do something that no one else has ever done. And I did a lot of comedy slash motivation. This, this created this thing called inspirational comedy that kind of blended the idea of comedy and content together. And I talked a lot about change and a lot about understanding that life is full of change and everything changes, everything evolves. And I came up with the idea to do this thing called the evolution of dance it would be a high energy a lot of fun at the end of my shows to kind of send people off on a high note and to give them a visual idea of, of how life changes and so i started doing the dance in 2001 it started off with about 12 songs two and a half minutes and every few months or sometimes quicker than that i would add songs to the mix making it bigger and bigger and bigger until around 2005 it was at six minutes and i recorded lots of different shows and then decided to put it up on YouTube. And then after that, the video kind of took off on its own and became this, you know, viral video that it is today. I put my stuff on YouTube in October 2006 and within the first month, YouTube featured one of my videos. I didn't submit it to them. I have no idea how they found it, but they found a video of mine called Greg Hits Hollywood. Have you ever been on television before? Yes. And uh, do you enjoy being on the television? Yes. And it went on the front page and it got eight or nine hundred thousand views in the course of a week. And I got my first few thousand subscribers thanks to that video. And and people started writing saying, hey, you know, I like your like your sketches. When are you putting up more? And so I realized, you know, I should keep doing this and, and keep putting up stuff because it was fun. And people were watching the new videos when I put them up. Before you know it, it's five years later and I have over six hundred thousand subscribers and web wide about two hundred million views. We were just sitting in Aaron's room one day and I was like, dude, let's just go film a short sketch. Let's just go film something stupid like we used to do. And then we filmed the Snowball Massacre and it was like this dumb little video about us like getting in a snowball fight and it was really bloody and violent, which kind of was, a, you know, we liked doing. Um, and that was the first like, what should we call it? You know, like always like we have like dumb little production company names and we were like f and Films, so Frank and Dago, our last names. That was like the birth of f and And then from there, all other films like follow that, like that format. Just short, let's make it as funny as we can, not really give a shit like how great it is as long as, you know, we laugh at it. You know, that's when YouTube was actually starting to take off and we figured what the heck, we'll try it out. We put some more of our, um, I guess more popular videos on there, and those took off, and then from there it was just every single one we started posting. Whoa, that's a full rainbow all the way. Double rainbow, oh my god. It's a double rainbow all the way. Whoa. I shot that. It's so a famous double rainbow video. I was like, man, this is amazing. I know this is going to go viral. I'll open my door and walk outside, and, and that's a video. See it. And I'm off there by myself. What's going through my mind is. Um, this is really amazing. I just need to hold the camera steady and I'll just dump the audio. So it don't matter what I say, you know, uh, and I'll just let it flow. Oh, wow! Woo! Yeah! The whole thing that I come to realize was that um, I was witnessing God firsthand. And um, the Double Rainbow video is a mirror for humanity to look into their own soul. And then. You know, you, and you get every range of comment on there. So that was beautiful. That was so spiritual. You know, that was funny. Or you must have been having sex or you're on drugs. You know, none of that was true. Well, I started on YouTube uh, August of 2011. Then I started doing videos and I started growing really, really slow. Like I got 64 subscribers in three months. So I was like, wow, I, like I'm done. Like I'm not going to do this anymore. Then I just like, you know, let me give it a chance. I kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And uh, I started growing, and I think I was at 5,000 subscribers. And then I did this video called Miami Zombie Prank, and that took off 20 million views. It put me to 100,000 subscribers. 
So once you have that, it was easier. It was I was more motivated to upload videos because I knew people were watching me, and from then on, I started growing. After being featured a couple times on the front page, then all of a sudden I had twenty or thirty thousand subscribers, and uh, uh, so I had a base of fans who were waiting to see the next video that I would put up. And shortly thereafter, I introduced another series called Retarded Policeman. He is a cop and he's learning impaired. He's the retarded policeman. That's me. I mean, the thing on YouTube that really took off for us was uh, unfortunately not on our channel, uh, but it was on the Mediocre Films channel. We did it with our friend yeah. at the time. Ultimately, we ended up doing with with uh, Mediocre Bye. Films doing like 21 episodes. Bye. Mm -hmm. Retired policeman probably got about 80 or 90 million views now. He seemed nice. And around the same time that we started doing that, YouTube launched the beta partner program. And I was one of their first 50 partners. So I started to make uh, videos for YouTube and for the first time I was getting paid because they were splitting the advertising revenue with me. I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10 to get big on YouTube, I I have no idea actually. It's honestly, it, it's so it's so hard to try and like say it, it is or isn't hard because, you know, you can someone could post something and it can blow up and like you know it can, it's kind of like it's kind of like winning the lottery I think. I never wanted anybody more than I want you. Um, I was actually working at an ad agency for uh, about two years, and then in the midst of that, and I, and I like doing that a lot, but in the midst of it, I created the Obama Girl video, more as just, you know, something I thought would be fun to do. Amber, who plays Obama Girl, I found a few days after I came up with the idea, you know, it was sort of a mix of you know, girls and politics. But when it first came out, every news station was talking about it. She was on Saturday Night Live. We were getting calls from international newspapers and magazines, and it really became the symbol of um, the election has changed. People have more control. This is democratizing the process. We got to go to panels and talk, you know, with people from C-SPAN and go to Democratic conventions. And it really just felt like we were a part of the 2008 elections. Uh, and that video did so well so quickly that it actually allowed me to kind of jump into YouTube and online video full time. How many views does a video have to get to be a viral video? What's the goal of the video itself? Okay, what is it for? And then who is it that you want to watch it? Oh, I just want a video that a lot of people are going to watch. Okay, but why do you want a lot of people to watch this video? Well, a viral video simply is a video that people spread around from one person to the next like a virus. You know, passes around like the flu. You know, one guy sees it and he goes, this is hilarious. And he sends an email out to six friends. And then those friends go, this is hilarious. And they send it out to 10 more of their friends. And it just passes around from one person to the next, like a virus. It, it's interesting because you think about like a, a viral video, you know, what's gonna make 30 million people sit down and watch it? You know, what's gonna like put 30 million asses in 30 million seats and they're gonna watch this video over and over. I mean, if it's funny, it's funny. <laughs> We have views literally from all around the world and there are other videos which are probably more localized and have a certain country's um, following. Whereas, you know, for example, last week, the country with the second most views was Saudi Arabia. So, it, so Charlie bit my finger really is a very much a global thing. It's, it's all over the world. And, and yes, it may have become popular originally in the US, but it, it's, it's the US now probably account for you know, a, a tenth of the views on a daily basis. Like Vinny said, it's like winning the lottery because everybody thinks that there's like some special formula to making a viral video. And the fact is, nobody goes into it. Nobody says like, I'm going to make a viral video. You like, look at any of them, like Charlie bit my finger or the kid that goes to the dentist. Like they were shot in the moment just because they thought they, you know, be funny to pass on to family members and stuff. And then they blew up, you know, nobody goes out and is like, this is going to be a viral video. And then they upload it to get millions and millions of views. It's, I just don't think it works that way. It's, it's very spontaneous and um, very, I don't know, random.